Hi, my name's Kira Forsyth and at the ripe old age of 22, I've been through three very different chapters in life. I've gone from being able-bodied to having an invisible disability to then a visible disability. Um, I, had, I was able-bodied from when I was born until just before I was 16. From 16 to 21, I had an invisible disability and from 21 until today I've had a visible disability which until I turn reptilian and it grows back I'll probably have it for life because it's not going to happen. Um, I've chosen this video today to sort of reflect on these three very different chapters of my life because today is the eight year anniversary for when I broke my arm which caused this. Um, so I'll put the link in the description box below for anyone who hasn't seen the first video, how I describe how I broke my arm and what happened since then. Um, but for those close to me, they know that the 6th of August 2012 is National Squirrel Day because it's the squirrel's fault I broke my arm and I will always blame the squirrel and not me. Um, so this just seemed the perfect opportunity to reflect um, on my anniversary. So just to clarify for those of you who don't know me and don't know anything about me, I personally have complex regional pain syndrome, which is abbreviated to CRPS. Um, some people with CRPS would classify themselves as having a visible disability. I personally didn't when I had active CRPS. Um, but I have symptoms that show very differently than the, the norm. So a lot of people with CRPS, um, they get skin lesions, massive discoloration, um, and a lot of them, their bones fuse, which makes it a bit more obvious. And some of them have aids like a walking stick or a wheelchair, which gives a visual cue to everyone around them that they've probably got a disability or something going on. I had none of that so this is why I classify it as an invisible disability at that point in my life because other than slight skin colour variation and the fact I held my arm like this you wouldn't really know that I had a disability. So general society and those closer to you tend to have predicted plans based on norms about where your life's going. So. Um, they know like a rough plan of you're more than likely going to finish university um, or have a job, have kids, get married. I know some people personally who they know what age they want to finish uni by, what age they want a house by, family, marriage, kit, like everything. They've got it planned out to a T. That's what they want to do in life and by which age. And it's only natural, it's human behaviour to plan. Um, it's a survival mechanism and it means you know you're putting all of your energy into achieving what you want to achieve um, and don't get me wrong I plan and um, but I know as well as anyone that plans change so I never sat as a child and when I'm going to finish school um, I'm gonna do my A levels I'm gonna have my arm off because it just wouldn't have been normal if that was my plan I'd hope someone would have raised an alarm somewhere and gone like mm, there's something wrong here um, so that was never obviously in my predicted plan but life happens it throws a curveball some of us catch it some of us get hit in the face um, so like personally as a child my living my best life dream was to be a pigeon. It was in all my schoolwork. I, when I grow up, would like to be a pigeon. And then the crushing reality of life hit and I was told I could not be a pigeon. So I had to scrap that plan and find a new one. Um, again, when I broke my arm and everything changed, my plans at that point were sort of crushed and I'd think again and dream up new plans. The current climate of the world today with coronavirus, people's plans have been put on hold for I think it's six months now. Um, this can be frustrating, upsetting, throw people's plans completely off course or it's put them in the position where you now need new plans and this takes resilience. Um, by the age of 15 I'd planned which GCSEs I was doing 
which A levels I was doing to get to the dream job I wanted to do, which university I thought I wanted to go to in order to achieve what I wanted to get to where I needed to be. At 15 I felt I knew who my friends were, who I could rely on, who my support network was really. At 15 I was a fairly shy child um, who society viewed as mildly intelligent, which might have been a bit of a stretch. Um, I was physically capable, sporty, I could conduct a conversation. Um, but at 15 my life changed and so did most of the previously mentioned aspects of my life. So by 15 um, I knew what most of my limitations in life were, like most people do. So in order to achieve my plans I knew what might stop me along the way. I knew what my intelligent levels were, I knew that I worked hard at school so I was like, I knew which grades I was likely to achieve if I carried on working hard at them and I then therefore knew which sort of levels of university I was likely to be able to get into. Um, I knew um, my limitations in terms of like friendships, um, I knew that I was shy, I was never a cool kid which you can probably tell from the pigeon dream, um, like yeah that didn't get me many friends um, and these limitations were parallel to thousands of people my age, like it wasn't anything abnormal um, and they were built on real life experiences and societal norms. I was going on a pretty set standardised path and yeah society could look in on it and they would agree that was standard. The differences I found since being disabled is that people's perceptions and their perceived limitations on what they think I can't do um, aren't based on real life experience. People often feel uncomfortable and um, they jump straight to worst case scenario and they limit what they believe I can do before I even have a chance to attempt it. So the second chapter in my life was having an invisible disability which was a really bizarre experience um, and I see it as it was helpful but also a hindrance so the positives were um, how I felt I was perceived and um, people very rarely noticed my arm and um, a lot of people at school like people in my year the other years my teachers were unaware of what was going on in my life and um, so I wasn't limited to what others thought at that stage I was capable of doing because a lot of people didn't realize my life had really changed um, and this allowed me to adapt to ways that I could then cope with tasks so I learned how to like carry boxes one-handed, I played sports one-handed, so like I taped when my arm was numb, I taped it to hockey sticks to play, to play netball, I caught the ball with sort of like my chest and my hand, I learned how to do basic things like brushing your teeth and how to go about that doing one-handed without people like babying and saying like you can't do that because a lot of people didn't know I was relearning how to do these things. Um, However, an invisible disability also came with challenges. So a lot of people didn't believe me when I told them that I was now disabled. We broke up from the summer holidays. I was a normal child, which is hard to believe after the pigeon story. But in medical terms, I was a normal child. I'd come back from the summer holidays with my arm in a cast and I was now disabled. Um, I had no feeling in that arm um, and People didn't believe me when I told them that I couldn't feel my arm whatsoever or that I was in constant excruciating pain. Um, this included medical professionals and really close friends. Um, I was constantly asked to prove that I was disabled, which was impossible for me to do. Like, there's no way to prove you have CRPS. Um, like I could cry if you touch my arm or you could burn my arm and I wouldn't know but it doesn't prove you're disabled, it doesn't really prove anything um, and I was asked to prove I was disabled, people would like hit it, 
people bit my arm, they prodded it to check for responses, which was really hard to experience and go through because going through an invisible disease was hard enough without those who I assumed would be my support network and who would trust me were all of a sudden questioning me. Um, I experienced people staying up at sleepovers to check if I was actually struggling to sleep um, and whether they could catch me sleeping and then when my arm was numb people would stay up at sleepovers and comments were made about like they were going to try and wait for me to go to sleep and then they were going to hurt my arm to see whether I woke up in response um, and this was a time in my life where I've lost way more friends than I gained. Um, going through medical trials meant I missed large portions of school and I struggled to concentrate when I did manage to get into school. Um, combine this with sleeping around two hours a night, yes yeah, school was a huge struggle for me. Um, a lot of people around me also didn't know which then made that highly difficult. Um, I was on more painkillers than you can imagine. I was on loads of experimental pain, pain um, like medications, trials, um, and these had huge side effects that I experienced. Um, I was struggling to stay awake because I was so exhausted, but I was still um, sort of expected to get the same grades, hit the same goals in life that had sort of been set on the predisposition of how I was in stage one of my life um, with no disability but I now had these huge distractions um, as my teachers became sort of more aware of what I was going through um, they became a huge part of my, my support network like my school was great and um, my head of sixth form was amazing um, he ensured I got all the help I needed and um, I basically carried on with school which is what the hospital perceived as impossible for me to do. Um, medical professionals were a huge group of people who perceived my capabilities now that I had an invisible disability as being far lesser. Um, I was advised to leave education whilst I focused on sorting out my medical aspect of life. Um, and they basically said like yeah drop out of school you're doing a lot of sports based stuff as well that is not achievable um, they told me it was impossible to do both um, so ag against medical advice I sort of chose to ignore that hurdle and carry on with school and I looked into getting a part-time job which was again impossible to do um, I really struggled um, a lot of high profile businesses whose names I will not mention told me they couldn't hire me as I would be incapable of completing basic tasks and the job requirements um, because of my arm. <laughs> um, this at the time was really heartbreaking because I wasn't able to do a lot of normal things in life for my age but I thought getting a job was going to be one of them. I thought that was going to be a really easy thing for me to achieve um, and I wasn't even being given the opportunity um, to prove that I could do it or given the time to see myself if I could do these tasks. Um, I remember one retailer in particular specified that I couldn't fold clothing um, one-handed which is something I at that point had been doing for years at home with my own clothes um, but the individual who said it couldn't imagine that job being done one-handed so she placed that limitation on me straight away. Um, when I did then eventually get a job in retail um, I was able to complete most of the tasks my two-handed colleagues were doing one-handed um, a lot of customers um, and even some of my colleagues didn't realize I was only using one arm um, however backpacking not my strong point like oh god don't ask me to backpack um, another really strange aspect at this time in my life um, was what people felt they could now say to me 
um, which isn't something I'd prepared for. So I fully knew that I had my sleeve rolled up, I was doing things one-handed but my arm looked normal, so I knew this was strange. Um, but the general public then somehow felt they could now ask really personal questions, which is something I would never do as a customer. But yeah, people would, even out in the streets, people just made comments. So I was asked constantly why I dressed with my sleeve rolled up, why I wore t-shirts in the freezing cold, um, why on a really hot summer's day I was now not taking a jacket off but I just couldn't do those things. Um, people asked why I constantly look exhausted, I looked like death. Um, and people would make comments like, oh, you're just not bothering to use that arm today. Um, and you sort of have to do that thing where you just sort of smile and think like, mm, thank you for making that helpful comment. Um, and then when I actually explained to people um, what was actually happening to my arm, um, people made really <laughs> bizarre comments like, um, oh, if that was me, I would kill myself. Um, people would be like, do you really think you're going to get a boyfriend now you're disabled? Um, people vocalised to myself and people I knew that by attaching themselves to me, um, I was basically asking them to take on a carer role and did people really want to neg negatively affect their lives by being my carer? Um, up until that point in my life I'd never experienced such personal questions being asked by complete strangers but people seemingly thought they could now just vocalise all their inner thoughts and this type of interaction took way more resilience to overcome and ignore um, than any of the pain I was feeling with CRPS. Um, and invisibility was really restrictive in my life for years. Um, I felt I was no longer functioning. I was going through the motions of life I was getting from day to day. Um, and to get over these constant restrictions and the impossible things that people said I couldn't do, took a lot of resilience to try and push through and carry on and try and achieve goals. Um, and with this came a hint of confidence which I had never previously in my life had. If I could do the impossible every single day of my life, I could go over hurdles people said I could not do, then why couldn't I chat to people I was previously too shy to? Why couldn't I wear what I wanted? Why couldn't I live a little? Um, Opting to have my arm off spiced up my life um, as I was now turning the page from able-bodied invisible disability to now a visible disability um, but this time it was my choice to change it um, which was brought a different sort of kettle of fish um, and at this point I was pre-warned about some of the experiences that come along with being an amputee, someone with a visible disability and especially if you were going to be vocal about being disabled, people did forewarn me, yeah, people are strange. Um, but I'd experienced years of my life with an invisible disability and wishing people could see what I was going through um, and not having to think about when in a conversation I was going to disclose that I am actually disabled. Um, because people didn't realise but when you're making new friends or you're chatting to new people or you're out on a night out and people are getting a bit too close and they're trying to chat to you yeah there comes a point in a conversation where you have to go like you can't touch my arm or like oh no I won't be going away to uni because I don't sleep I can't touch my arm um, yet at times I kind of enjoyed that with an invisible disability I could blend into the crowd people didn't have to know there was something different with me. Um, by this point I'd whittled down my support network um, to people that I really trusted and I believed in which made this transition a lot easier than the first transition I'd gone through. However again I did lose some people along the way through this transition um, 
some people came really obsessed obsessed with the way my arm now looked and people were like oh I don't know whether it makes me feel sick I don't know whether I like it how will I ever look at it I don't think I'll ever be able to touch it um, and then I had the opposite where some people it was very much like oh can we take Instagram photos together can I post you on my Instagram people who hadn't spoke to me in a long time messaging about suddenly wanting to meet up um, and they all, all sort of rotated around this thing of wanting to boast about the fact that they had a disabled friend, which wasn't a bit of me. Um, and that I was far more prepared for this time round. And I knew that the rest of my support network um, was so strong that this didn't really matter, like losing a few along the way who weren't real friends um, or real support network. Like, yeah, it did not matter my quality of life going from invisible disability to visible my quality of life improved by a non-comparable amount um, instead of facing like lack of sleep as a struggle pain which people couldn't see my struggles were now things like tying laces carrying multiple objects at once because i didn't want to make more than one journey from the car but now everyone around me could see these. They knew that that was an obvious struggle for me. Um, and I went back to things like work. Customers were baffled. There was customers I'd served for three years on the tail and all of a sudden they were like, I never realised there was anything wrong with your arm. I didn't realise you were only using one arm this whole time. Um, I found loads of tasks a lot easier to do because I didn't need to worry about knocking my arm and causing a pain response. Um, my dating life still remains dire. Um, and I still get comments. Um, people say things like, why would you want to be with a deformed freak? Um, which is now a reference. It's the top line of my CV. Um, I still get huge amounts of comments like where is your arm, your poor parents having a disabled child, I bet they never planned their life to have a disabled child, um, you get people staring or like people actually bend down and like look directly at your arm and you sort of look at them like hello I am a person. Um, but what I gained in having my arm off was confidence which people didn't expect. Um, people assumed that going into a visible disability I would, especially at the age I was at, be hugely self-conscious but I wasn't. Um, I no longer really cared about what these people thought or said. I was living the most amazing life and a life that I hadn't planned for. So who are these strangers to me? Um, I think a visible disability takes confidence. Um, people stare, they make comments really loud at the supermarket, people place a lot more limitations on what they think I can't do now um, because more people can see straight away, yes there is something different um, and people are more than happy to vocalise uh, these limitations. <laughs> um, but I'm now surrounded by medical staff who do everything to help me achieve what I want to achieve, they put me in um, contact like driving like how to access that and um, they work on prosthetics to help me achieve the fitness goals I want and um, they help me remove hurdles whereas previously I had people placing them in front of me and um, and yeah I do struggle like my hair's a mess today but I've tied this up this has taken a year to learn how to do and um, spreading peanut butter I get it all over stumpy because I place him on um, so that's a really good look um, but I verbalise if I need help um, I think one of the hardest aspects of a visible disability um, is that people people fail to see that tr disabled people truly aren't that different um, and the language people use to describe disabled people and myself like I can't even put in a video like it's not PG um, but yeah I think the some of the per 
I still think a visible disability for myself has been far easier to cope with than an invisible disability um, but it doesn't come without its challenges but I think now because I don't have the awful symptoms that came along with when I had my invisible disability it's so much easier now to think like well yeah life's better so I don't mind taking a bit off people whereas before that was like the cherry on top of the cake of quite a negative sort of quality of life um, I've now met others with arms just like mine um, Stumpy's got all his friends um, and they did everything I did as an able-bodied person growing up and more like some of the stuff they did I was truly amazed at how they did it because I could not do that able-bodied I can't do some of it now but I've learned bits and pieces um, and I think a visible difference gave me unity having an invisible disability can be quite isolating because people don't realise you're disabled you don't fit in with fully disabled people you don't fit in with um able-bodied people you're sort of in that weird bracket in between um but now i've found people who look and are exactly the same as me um i look at photos of myself now with two arms and i really struggle to think that's me uh, not just because the arm's different but that's part of it um, like I fully see myself now as a, a one-armed person and I see photos of myself and I think like oh yeah I did actually have two arms just over a year ago but I also struggle to think that was me um, because I now don't shut up <laughs> um, and I used to be painfully shy like I used to have to push myself to go out and chat to people I hated parties yet yeah, now if I when I tell people now that I used to be shy they visit they like laugh in my face they're like are you joking because I don't shut up um and I will chat to anyone about everything um and I wear what I want I pursue what I want in life and I do the impossible every day which is a pretty sick way to live life um, taekwondo and sports in general were deemed impossible completing a degree impossible um, and I'm doing both of those things I was limited at that point to what people saw as surviving and not achieving anything of any sort of value um, and now I'm a boss and um, I'm achieving what I want in life I've got a plan a B and C um, they're all big dreams um, and some of them interlink but I know I've got the resilience that if any of them don't work or a hurdle comes up in life or another swerve ball um, that I know I can replan, rejig and go again. Um, I also know that I now have the strongest support network um, I see myself in life as a cheerleader on the top of the pyramid so I'm up here shaking my pom-poms and everyone in my pyramid I know is there for me they're not going to leave and let me collapse in the pyramid and they hype me up to cheer the best I can and I think that's how you have to be in life you have to cut toxic people out and it's the same it goes both ways if I'm in your pyramid I will cheer you from the bottom to the top and say you do you boo because I think that's how you've got to be life throws you enough challenges without being surrounded by people who don't want you to achieve your dreams so that's enough for me I've waffled for long enough um, I did this video during the pandemic to show that people can adapt to adversity um, resilience is within every one of you saw me back when I was 15 you wouldn't think I was a fighter you wouldn't think I was strong determined I was just a sort of like plain Jane shy in my box and I look what I've overcome now and sometimes it does hit it's normally when other people say to you like you've done that and I think like oh yeah I have actually done quite a lot in life and been through quite a bit 
So I think dream big and do the impossible every day. If someone else deems it impossible, why do you have to then think that is impossible? What does that person know? I think remove toxic people from your life, like bye. Um, and then you can't go far wrong. Um, disability promoted the resilience in me. Um, and I don't think disability or resilience is something people should be scared of. Change is a part of life and what makes us all different is what makes life special. If we were all the same, it would be so boring. Um, and one of my favourite quotes is from Forrest Gump um, and basically says that his mum always said to him, if God wanted us all to be the same, we would all be born with braces on our legs. And I truly love that. Um, everyone is different. If someone wanted us all to be the same, we would all be the same. So I think achieve your goals, go out there and do it. If you need help, make sure you've got a strong support network to get there and you do have the resilience inside yourself to get to it. So that's enough from me and Stumpy. So <laughs> bye.